Section. Introduction. In this section, we explore how large language models, LLMs, learn from vast amounts of text data during pre-training. To make LLMs more useful in real-world applications, researchers have focused on aligning these models with human preferences. Different methods, such as supervised fine-tuning, SFT, and reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, have been developed to fine-tune LLMs. SFT helps create a base model, while RLHF enhances the model's performance by refining it based on human feedback. RLHF includes reward-based and reward-free approaches. Reward-based methods, like Proximal Policy Optimization, PPO, from OpenAI, use a reward model to improve LLMs based on preference data. On the other hand, reward-free methods like Direct Preference Optimization, DPO, focus on optimizing the model directly without using a reward function. We aim to answer two key questions. Is DPO better than PPO in RLHF, and can PPO's performance be improved in common benchmarks? Through theoretical analysis, we find limitations in DPO that may lead to biased solutions. Empirically, we show that DPO's performance is affected by differences between model outputs and preference data. We also conduct studies on PPO's components and identify factors crucial for its success in RLHF. These factors include advantage normalization, large batch size, and updates for the reference model. Our experiments, covering tasks like dialogue and code generation, consistently show that PPO outperforms DPO. In challenging code tasks, our PPO model with 34B parameters surpasses existing models, demonstrating a significant improvement in performance. Our work builds on previous studies that fine-tune LLMs for specific tasks, focusing on RLHF methods like PPO and DPO. We investigate the limitations of DPO and key training factors for PPO, aiming to enhance PPO's performance beyond DPO. Our findings provide insights into optimizing LLMs with up to 34B parameters, contributing to the broader research on RLHF methods. Section Summary In this section, we explore the significance of aligning large language models, LLMs, with human preferences for practical applications. Various methods like supervised fine-tuning, SFT, and reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, are used to fine-tune LLMs, with RLHF involving reward-based and reward-free approaches. Our analysis reveals that while reward-based methods like Proximal Policy Optimization, PPO, excel in applications like ChatGPT, reward-free methods such as Direct Preference Optimization, DPO, show strong performance in academic benchmarks. Through theoretical and empirical studies, we uncover limitations of DPO and identify critical factors for enhancing PPO's performance in RLHF tasks, demonstrating PPO's superiority over DPO across various experiments, including challenging code generation tasks. Section. Understanding the limitation of DPO. In this section, we will explain why DPO may not always outperform PPO. Firstly, we will discuss the theoretical issues with the DPO training objective. Secondly, we will demonstrate that DPO is more vulnerable to out-of-distribution data using a synthetic example. Lastly, we will show through experiments on a real preference dataset that improving the alignment between the model outputs and the preference dataset can enhance the performance of DPO. When it comes to theoretical analysis, we know that PPO can sometimes exploit flaws in the learned reward model to achieve high rewards without truly reflecting human preferences, often resulting in incorrect or overly complex outputs. We argue that even though DPO avoids using a reward model, it faces a similar problem with generalization. We will prove a theorem that shows any solution found by PPO to minimize the reward also minimizes the DPO objective. This means that any solution found by PPO through the reward model can also be found by DPO. Additionally, DPO may find solutions that exploit out-of-distribution data, leading to significant deviations from the reference policy even when the reference policy aligns well with human preferences. 
we will demonstrate that the class of policies induced by training the reward model and running PPO is a subset of the class of policies induced by minimizing the DPO objective. We will provide a proof showing that the minimum DPO loss is equivalent to the minimum reward learning loss. Furthermore, we will show that any solution found by PPO also minimizes the DPO loss. We will then present a counterexample to show that there are solutions found by DPO that do not maximize the RL objective of PPO. The root cause of reward misspecification lies in the limited coverage of the preference dataset. The learned reward model may assign high values to out-of-distribution samples, which can be exploited during the reinforcement learning process. Although DPO avoids training a reward model, it still faces misspecification issues with OOD samples in a different way. DPO may develop a biased distribution favoring unseen responses, affecting the quality of the learned policy. In contrast, PPO can use prompt-only data to generate responses beyond the preference dataset distribution. The KL divergence between distributions can provide additional regularization for PPO on these generated samples during training. Section Summary In this section, we demonstrate that DPO may not outperform PPO. We show theoretical issues with the DPO training objective and its susceptibility to out-of-distribution data. Through experiments, we confirm that improving the alignment between model outputs and the preference dataset can enhance DPO performance. Section. Empirical validation in a synthetic scenario. In this section, we created a synthetic scenario to validate our main theorem in practice. We designed discrete spaces with eight options for both inputs and responses. The policy and reward model were represented using multi-layer perceptrons, MLPs, which take a one-hot vector as input and output a distribution of responses. We ensured that the optimal response was at diagonal indices. The preference dataset was randomly generated under this constraint, covering limited preference pairs for each input. The resulting policies of deterministic policy optimization, DPO, and proximal policy optimization, PPO, are displayed in a heat map. We observed that DPO and the learned reward model could assign high values to responses outside the preference dataset distribution. However, DPO sometimes assigned higher probabilities to these responses compared to the reference model, which could lead to unpredictable behavior. On the other hand, PPO could mitigate this issue with explicit regularization. From our analysis, we gained insights into DPO's performance in practice, noting its tendency to favor out-of-distribution responses, which can result in unpredictable behaviors. We plan to further investigate these insights through experiments involving real preference datasets. In our experiments with real preference datasets, we explored how the base model and preference data used for DPO training could impact its performance. We conducted our analysis on the SAFE RLHF dataset, where preferences were based on safety and helpfulness labels. We aimed to train a language model, LLM, prioritizing safety in content generation. We observed that when using a specific base model, DPO's performance was subpar due to distribution shift between the base model's training data and the preference dataset. By fine-tuning the base model on the preference dataset, we were able to improve DPO's safety rate and helpfulness reward. We also found that the quality of preference data significantly influenced DPO's performance. Filtering out certain types of preference data could either enhance safety or harm helpfulness. Additionally, we investigated the impact of collecting additional data with the base model and found that an iterative approach, DPO IDER, could improve DPO's safety rate but at the cost of a lower helpfulness reward compared to PPO. Our experiments highlight the importance of addressing distribution shift and noisy data in DPO training. We recommend adopting the iterative DPO method to mitigate these issues by carefully annotating model-generated samples in each training round. Section Summary In this section, we design a synthetic scenario to validate our main theorem in practice by creating discrete spaces of inputs and responses. We model the policy and reward using MLPs and manually enforce optimal responses. Through experiments on real preference datasets, 
we find that DPO performance can be improved by addressing distribution shifts and noisy data, suggesting the iterative DPO method as a potential solution. Section. Key factors to PPO for RLHF. In this section, we explore the key factors influencing the performance of PPO in RLHF. We identify three main techniques, advantage normalization, large batch size training, and updating the reference model parameters using exponential moving average. While the first two techniques are commonly used in RL, they are not extensively studied in RLHF. The third technique, involving gradual updates to the reference model, is less discussed but has the potential to enhance performance further. Our PPO implementation is based on deep speed chat, with some modifications. We use a scalar reward for each response instead of dense rewards assigned to each token. Additionally, we exclude the auxiliary SFT loss during PPO training due to limited data availability. Our implementation includes standard PPO techniques like value loss clipping and generalized advantage estimation, GAI. Detailed experiment information is provided in the appendix. We conduct ablation experiments on a dialogue task hydrogen hydride RLHF and two code generation tasks, apps and code contest. HHRLHF focuses on training a helpful and harmless LLM based on human preferences. Apps and code contest involve generating executable code to solve given problems. The correctness of the generated code is verified using test cases in the datasets, which provide reward signals for PPO and DPO training. These tasks offer different types of reward signals, preference and direct reward feedback. The results of our ablation study show that advantage normalization and large batch sizes improve PPO performance. Using an exponential moving average for the reference model also provides additional benefits. This approach ensures that the reference model adapts alongside the main LLM, preventing over-regularization that can hinder performance in challenging tasks. Increasing the batch size consistently enhances performance across all difficulty levels in the app's dataset. We note that using a small batch size during PPO training can negatively impact the base SFT model's performance. Our findings align with those in the RL community demonstrating the effectiveness of PPO in improving performance. Further experiments evaluate the performances of DPO and PPO on various tasks, showcasing the superiority of PPO in generating more preferred responses.